Hey guys, thanks for coming in for a video today. I'm going to bring you a little bit of a show and tell show jewelry haul. And then we can go into some tips about reselling. And that's kind of the, the gist of the show here on A-Listers. We talk a lot about reselling and tips. Hey, Wade, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you being here. We're going to talk a little bit about reselling. I've been doing it for a long time. I did it right. I did it wrong. I did it every which way. I faked it until I made it. That's kind of the gist of the title. And I was prompted to do this particular one because of some questions I've been getting about how to detect fakes and how do you know what's a real pearl? How do you know what's real turquoise? How do you know what's a real Prada and so forth and so on. But more than that, Let's talk about how we do what we do. Why, why do we do what we do? Why do we resell? What do we get out of it? Well, we do get a lot of profit if you know how to do it right. Again, when I started doing um, eBay, it was because I had a Peter Max clock. It was because I was a big time hoarder. I've always loved 60s quiche, kitsch, rather, and, uh, you know, 60s motifs of everything. I collected everything from cigarette lighters to cigarette holders, to ashtrays, to handbags, obviously jewelry, always been a jewelry hoarder. So uh, it got to the point where I had to resell and I would resell at flea markets. Flea markets are a whole other animal and it does take skill to sell at a flea market. I had to stop taking my husband to flea markets because he does not know how to sell at a flea market. He almost uh, sabotages sales because he's very... He's a very honest and, and candid person. And not that I want you to ever think that I fake people or anything like that, but you have to know how to play things up. You must, you must play and value your things or they will not sell. And it doesn't matter if it is an old barbecue pit or if it's a Prada bag, you must play it up. And if you don't know how to do that, you don't belong in reselling. You really don't. And I think I told you guys a few, maybe a month ago that my husband had started to help and in the business and he had sold an item on, on eBay and he sold it really quick. It's Harley Davidson. Uh, it was a really beautiful plaque, big old wings and everything, obviously very collectible. It probably would have sold itself, but he did sell it. And, but when I had tried to get him to start selling, it wasn't what he wanted to sell. Right. I had told him to sell some of my collectibles, some glassware I had nothing breakable or, I mean, nothing really fragile or really expensive, but I just wanted him to get his feet wet and learn how to photograph, learn how to upload and all of that. So he did it, but his heart wasn't in it. Then he did the eBay thing and he did well, like I said, but he did not really gravitate towards it again. What he did like was offer up. I don't know if it was the, the tangible aspect of it where you actually get to hand over someone some money and you get to touch it. I don't know. But that's been what he's gravitated towards. And he has left eBay to, you know, on the back burner. So again, that's what I think we have to realize and we have to come to understand. What is it that we like to do? Because everyone wants to do this. Everyone wants to do that. And we can play around with it. I did it with jeans. I did it with other things. And it didn't work for me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I only enjoy, you know, nice items. I do enjoy, like I said, I used to collect a lot of 50s and 60s, mid-century things. I love finding that. I love the hunt. I love the thrill of someone telling me I've been looking for that. I finally found it. My father gave me one when I was young. That all of that played into my gravitation towards eBay and that particular community. And I've also noted in some of my videos that that community on YouTube in the beginning was really kind of a Facebook or a YouTube community. It was very much people communicated with each other. People wrote you back and thanked you for what you did. There was the feedback aspect, of course, but they actually, you know, would comment uh, on the feedback and say how much you had enlightened their lives or brightened their day or whatnot from finding that. That was all really, really important. But again, how do we keep doing that? How do we keep from losing, from getting burnout and losing, you know, the ambition? Because really, you have to, you almost have to have an ambition about it. You have to say, okay, I sold a thousand this month. I really want to hit 3,000. I really want to always consistently hit 2,000. You may not have the motivation because maybe it's a part time basis, like it is for me. I'm a full time teacher and uh, it's still a motivation factor for me. I still loving, 
I still love seeing those numbers go up. I love seeing that graph in my in my you know dashboard and everything growing. I have that ambition. I want to see it get bigger and better. Same thing with Poshmark. I wanted to be a, a Poshmark ambassador because everybody else was a Poshmark ambassador. I didn't really see much of a advantage other than getting more um, followers. But you really have to follow up on that. If you have the followers, you have to share, or you're not. Your followers are doing you no good. They're not sharing for you. If you're not sharing your new items or if you're not consistently adding more and more things. So you have to find something that motivates you, find something that keeps you going. And to me, that's in what you sell. A lot of people touched on the jewelry when when it's, you know, we started doing a lot of unjarrings and things like that. And we would talk about our sales. But if it's not something that you really, really like, I don't see how you can really enjoy selling it. Just like my husband could not see himself selling a lamp or, you know, anything that I think are, are interesting items. He sold motorcycle parts and that's what he liked to do. And he liked answering the questions on offer up and talking to people about their motorcycle and maybe telling them, yes, it fits or no, it doesn't fit, or you better not buy this one and, you know, so forth and so on. He found a niche there. He found a community there and that's what has kept him on offer up and, you know, all of these local venues. So that's kind of what, I wanted to bring you today was that and then also about the fakes because I'm constantly being asked how do you know it's real turquoise how do you know it's a pearl and I thought I would address a little bit of that today and then I'm going to show you some of the fabulous fabulous jewelry that I found in Chicago all right but let me say hello to a couple of people that joined me I really appreciate the 34 people that are here and seven of them did give me a thumbs up so I hope the rest of you will go over there and do the same I did change the room around. I know it's even busier than it was. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to tone it down a little bit. My husband says, tone it down. I don't think you toned it down at all. But I kind of move things around, and I'm going to have a bed in there pretty soon. You may not be able to see it, and that's what I'm trying to camouflage when I get my bed. I don't really want, you know, if I forget to make my bed or whatever, I don't want you to see it. <laughs> all right. It looks like we have Wade was the first one here, and you know we Excuse me, you know Wade, he's got his own channel. Wonderful content. I've been enjoying all the scores he's been doing at those um, storage units. Oh my goodness, that Asian one was incredible. I hope you do well on that one. I know you probably already sold everything, but I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I really want to email him about that one. I really, to, I really want that one. I really love that one. You've got such a score. It was um, incredible. So if you like watching treasure hunting, guys, go subscribe to Wade if you haven't. Picky Chick is here. Melissa Dietrich, Norma Robles, uh, Doris Ann, Chrisman, Jen Cat, Pamela, Cynthia Cheryl, Kathleen at this and that. Vanessa has also started doing videos. Guys, be sure and check her out. And she's got some great pop-ups. Now that is a jewelry person. Miss Vanessa, oh my gosh, she can pick them, she can eye them, they are so beautiful. And of course, she knows how it is when you start collecting, you got to resell to buy more, right? <laughs> Jude as well, my good friend Jude is in there, thank you. Norgus, hi, how are you, Miss Darlene? I'm glad you're here. Sandra, Forever Luzon, and Leanne. Leanne Live is here too, all the way from the Bay Area. I hope you're doing better today, Miss Leanne. All right, so first of all, let's get started with the turquoise. How do you, oh, let me update you on this one. Remember we found this one, guys? And I thought it was sterling and it really looked like sterling. But you know, with the lights in my face and everything, sometimes I can't see. You can actually see a little bit of the copper coming out of it. It is a lace agate and I still love it. Look how perfect it matches my shirt. I just love it to death. And I don't mind copper at all. I can't wait for it to turn all coppery. <laughs> So that was not sterling silver. I thought it was. I tested it. Get your acid testing kits. Where's mine? Mine's over there. It's. Let me show you the one I have. They're not expensive either, guys. I think I got this one for about $30. And this one has everything in it. It's the Puri Test. Super simple to use. You get a little square. That My little scratchy thing is somewhere. So you get a little scratchy thing, you scratch your, your 
you know, your ring or whatever, just a tiny little scratch, doesn't have to be much. And then you pour the acid over it. Now, a lot of people do the 18 karat. I'm not going to tell you about that one because I don't do that one. I do what the what the instructions say, which is to pour a drop on it. This one's for platinum. And if underneath the drop, you see the scratch disappearing, then you know it's not, you know, a genuine precious metal. So this one has everything from platinum, 18 karat, 14 karat, 22 karat, 10 karat, and the silver 925. So that's all you need. One of these, they're about $25, $30 on Amazon, eBay. That's a sure way to test it. But if you're at the store and you don't know, hi, Kim, thanks for coming in. Just, you know, look at it. You start to look at your metals and you can see the difference between a silver tone and a sterling, and I've showed it a few times. Let me show you with, um, let me see, do I have, okay, here's a real sterling. I just sold these rings, but I was gonna show them to you. Uh, you can even see the way, look at the metal here. And this one's signed, this one is not real sterling. And you can see how the metal, look, it looks like tinnish. This is really rich sterling over here with the turquoise. You can tell just by the way it looks, the, the fake, Sterling or the just the, the base metals, they have a different look to them completely. I also like to carry, you know, a, a cloth or I'll even get the back of my shirt and I'll rub it as well. And it will leave a black tarnish if it is sterling silver. This will polish up as well, but not the same way as sterling does. It actually doesn't leave a tarnish stain. So learn how to look at that and know that just because it is marked, does not mean it's sterling. These were some that Sandy had at her auction and she told us clearly that they were marked 925, but that they are not. And they're beautiful. I've gotten many compliments on this ring. It is marked 925. They're coming out of India, I believe, in China and they're marking them 925. So be very wary, be very careful of these types of rings. I have even seen them on Macari and the same seller is selling on Posh. And I've called her out on Macari, and I'm going to call, continue to call her out on, on uh, Poshmark because she's calling this 925, and it's not. And she'll do it with a lapis or, you know, just different um, semi-precious stones, lapis, coral. And it'll look really pretty, but when you get it in your hands and you see it even closer and you touch it and you, and you test it, it's not 925. So that's one way. Then I want you to look at the turquoise, guys. This one is not real turquoise. You can tell by the matrix being so, I don't know, almost, almost too uniform. Too uniform. There's like no consistency. There's too much consistency. There's not enough asymmetrical in it. It just seems a little bit too contrived. Now it is sterling, but the, the stone is not real turquoise. So be careful about that. Even a small little turquoise like this, you can tell is real turquoise. It's just got a faintness about the matrix in the corner. And you can see that. Then with these little nuggets too, you can see that it may even have what you think might be a flaw, have a little dimple or something on there. But you can see that it's not fake. And a lot of people are throwing the term native around really way too easily. It is not always Native American because it is sterling. I mean, because it's, it's turquoise and coral. This is not Native American. This is probably Thai. Nothing wrong with that. But don't say it's Native American just because it has turquoise. People are, oh, is it buffering? Oh, no, no, no. Is it buffering for everyone, guys? Because I am having trouble with my internet again. They're coming to bring me another modem. They're actually sending it in the mail. Oh, good, good. This one's actually signed. Not all native pieces are signed. This one does have three initials in the back. I love it when they're not. To me, it tells me 1960s, 70s, even earlier, because native pieces were not always signed. Oh, good, good. So look for that. Again, there's very, very telltale signs about the Native American pieces. They use the feather a certain way. They are, you know, you, you kind of get to know if that's Navajo or Hopi or Zuni. They all do inlay now. It's not just the Zuni that does the inlay work. So look at that consistency. The coral, it's you can tell it's coral and not 
um, what is that, spiny oyster. It's a little a richer color. But again, they're just throwing around that, that term way too, way too easily just because it happens to have a little bit of a design in sterling and it has a, you know, a native a turquoise or a coral. It does not make it Native American. OK, so just be aware of that with the chunky type of uh, turquoise. You, they feel like rocks. They're cold. They're heavy, even with their, you know, proportion to size. They're still heavy. This one, you can see, you know, all of the intricacies of that turquoise. It's not uniform. Not one of these is the same. They may match them nicely, but they're not the same. You can also, when they do this in howlite, they dye it. So it's easy to look inside of this one and see that it's consistently blue all the way through. But sometimes the dye goes through as well. So make sure you check all of those things, not just whether or not it's white on the inside. I happen to know this one's original. and I mean, I, I, this is my original piece. I had this since I was 17, 18 years old. I bought it from a, a Native American store. So I know what I'm looking at, but when I'm looking at it at the store, there's different ways to tell. See, it's got a very, very asymmetrical matrix. It's cold, it's heavy. There's different ways that you can tell. Even something tiny like this, Yes, it's got the, what do you call it? The sawtooth setting and everything. That's consistent usually with Native American pieces too. But they do it now. There's, you know, it could be a Southwest design. But you can also feel that it's cold. You can feel that it's not plastic. Put it to your teeth. You know, if you're not uh, afraid of that, <laughs> many people are. But uh, that's one thing you can do as well. All right. Then, what else did I want to show you? For, oh, the bags. Um, and then I'll show you what I found in Chicago. Oh, Kelly, I'm so glad you're here. But yeah, I just started. I just started. Um, I think I've been on, what, 10 minutes, guys? But this question was actually prompted by Kelly last night. We were talking about some bags. And she asked me how I know a Prada. She said she knows a little bit more about detecting the coach. Well, I know because I've, I've seen the real things. I go into stores. I've bought from stores. I, uh, I look at what people have. You know, my sister has bought Chanel's and so forth. And I study them. And if I don't, I look go to YouTube and I look for, for videos about detecting them. But once you get a hold of something of quality, you can just kind of tell. Another thing to always remember is that they're going to copy the latest trend. So Coach was very, very faked with the, the double C's all around about 10 years ago. Every time I see one of those, I especially at the thrift store, the first thing I, I look, think of is it's fake. So I look for that. And I'll usually try to find the vintage ones. Those are usually authentic. Uh, but we're not going to talk about Coach because a lot of people know Coach. This Philofax, this is a very expensive planner. It doesn't have an ostentatious logo. There's nothing about it that screamed to me Philofax, right? But, and like I said, these are very, very expensive. This is a very nice screen too. I don't know what they, they call this one. It's got their little logo on the side. But I touched it and I could feel the quality. That's why a lot of people don't go to the bins with gloves on because they want to feel that silk. They want to feel that wool and silk blend in the clothing. You get to learn that with, you know, with experience and with more, more time you put into it. The way they put in this, um, the pockets, everything was like executed wonderfully, you know. It's, it's the quality of the product. It's the aesthetic of the product. If it looks ugly to you, chances are it's not a real Louis Vuitton or a real Prada. I have found that that's usually the easiest way I detect them is the design is usually really ugly on the fakes. Unless, of course, like I said, they do the really, really popular styles. The Louis Vuitton, it's going to be a speedy that's that and the never fill, never full. That is constantly copied. The Prada that I found for $25 at the Goodwill and sold for over $400 on Poshmark, it was pink, like that kind of pink, but it had a metallic sheen to it. I saw it in the back of the counter. I was paying. I didn't see that it said Prada. I'd never seen a Prada like that, actually. 
I, I hadn't really paid attention to Prada since they had that little triangle logo in the front. This one didn't have it. But I saw the bag. It screamed quality to me. It said, look at me. Look at me. I'm gorgeous. Come, come pick me up. So let me see it. Touched it. Oh, my gosh. The leather felt like a baby's butt. Just the softest, most beautiful feeling in the world. And then it had a coating of metallic on it. I kept looking. The, the lining was meticulously sewn. It was of the most luxurious fabric. It was just gorgeous. And then I saw the, the little label that they had hidden somewhere with a holographic tab underneath it. All of those things are telltale signs of an authentic piece. You can just tell. Now, here's one that I picked up the other day. And I picked it up for one reason only, because it's a fake. And I wanted to show you how some of these, this is the most popular bag. This is the it bag right now, the Goyard. G, and it's got all the telltale signs of a real one, right? It's got the hidden logo in here. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's one right there. I mean, I could really fool somebody with this, It, re but I, I don't like fakes. I only bought it to show. I don't like fakes, but I was very much taken aback by it because I saw it and my co-worker was telling me, we were talking about she went with this particular brand. She was telling me they don't even sell these in Houston. There, you have to make an appointment. I don't know where the nearest store is. I forgot. But uh, to get them in person, to go, you know, you can get them online. Of course, I believe at their website. But you, there's not even a, a store that carries them. But this one feels real. It's got a beautiful feeling on the, the leather, I mean, on the straps. And it, they are leather. They are leather. But they, I did some research. I found out that the little bag, beautiful little bag, too. It goes with it. Feels like real leather too, but I found out that the serial number does not go there where they put it. It's actually supposed to be, I think, in the middle. I forgot now. I did all that research and now I forgot. It says made it France, says in Goy says Goyard and all. And this one is not leather. This is not leather. So they, you know, they compromised. Even though it looks great, the rest of it is leather. The rest of it looks fine. The stitching is impeccable, and it was only $5. <laughs> so I didn't mind bringing it in for show for $5. But again, this is the it bag right now. This is kind of like a never full style. This is the one they're going to fake. Now, if I go, I have found very many, quite a few. Let me go grab one. I have found quite a few of the long shop. And the long shop that's faked is the Le Pliage, the one that you can fold up and carry it with you for travel. So those are the ones that I constantly find, and they're fake. And I know how to detect those as well. The stitching will be a different color on the inside of the flat. But this is a classic style long shop, absolutely beautiful, wonderful leather. It's very understated. It's, it's got the little um, horse and rider down here in the corner. But this is not the one that, that's the it bag. So they're very likely not going to fake this bag. That's my point, is that they're going to fake the bags that are the most popular. So they had this one actually priced cheaper than a plastic, I think it was from Guess or somewhere. They had this one priced cheaper, and this one's immaculate. And easily a $500 bag. So that is that. You just kind of tell. You can just kind of tell. Go into, you know, a Nordstrom. Go touch those bags. Go touch that, that beautiful, luxurious leather. Get to know what it looks like. Look at the linings. The linings are always compromised. They use cheap really thin lining or they're, or, you know, like the, the old doonies, they didn't even line them. The fake doonies now from the nineties that they used to fake, they would line them in that really cheap pigskin. They do that with Louis Vuitton as well. Louis Vuitton does not use a leather lining. They use either that ultra suede or the, in the early nineties and eighties, they use that plastic that faux leather that actually would peel. Gucci did the same thing. So I can tell a Gucci a mile away. They also have a very, very distinct grain on their leather, on their uh, Ophidia style, the classic red and green stripe ones. So all of that, you just get to know from looking at them over and over and over again. And um, 
Yeah, oh, fake Louis are all over the place. I've only seen one real Louis, and I saw it the other day, and they wanted quite a bit for it, probably two times as much as what I could get one on Poshmark for. So I just left it there, and it was not even in good condition. But get to know that. There's lots of great videos on detecting those fakes. Let me show you some of the jewelry I got in Chicago and some I got on eBay and some I sold last night on my auction. So I want to make sure that I put it all back and not lose any of it. Um, and I think I did forget one. Put it in another envelope, but I'll probably show it to you later because I don't think I can find it right now. But I got this beautiful coral. This is a shadow box style. Native American, really pretty. And it's called a shadow box because it's all rich patina inside. What word did I say? What word did I just say? Let me see if I can find that other one. Patina? Goyard? What word did I say, guys? I don't remember now. Oh, I can't find the other one. Anyway, I'll show it to you later. Too much jewelry to show you anyway. What word was that? Thank you, Adam. Okay, look at this fabulous. Somebody tell me, is this a watermelon tourmaline or something? It is so pretty. They had half price day at one of the thrift stores. So I got this really pretty. You can see purples and blues in that. I got this for about $10. And of course, I knew my daughter would love it. I think it's a watermelon terminal. You can see blue. Then it goes to purple in a beautiful pyramid shape. Can you guys see that? I'm having trouble with this lighting. I get close and then it darkens on me. So that was one piece I got. Now I got these individually. I didn't buy any. The purse word. Oh, long champ. It's L-O-N-G as in long champ. But the French pronunciation is Longchamp, and it's L-O-N-G-C-H-A-M-P. A lot of people say Longchamp, but it's Longchamp. Yes, this one's really nice. It is on a sterling chain, super long chain, so she loved it. She put it on as soon as I brought it to the house. She went with me to Chicago. Look, it's got a little bit of a juicy at the end there. So that was a really good find, I think. And I love the way they put that chain right through it i think that's really cool and it was half price then i got her this i also i think i got it for about five dollars with the half price rose quartz chips we got that too right out of the counter at one of the thrift stores i got i got some cute stuff guys i don't know what this is i think it's some kind of an agate as well this one was half of 14, so I got it for seven. Look at those beautiful stones. Let me know what they are, guys. I don't know what they are. Is it Jasper? They're really highly polished, too. Look how gorgeous. I love it. Yeah, they had some really beautiful, it's rough material. Um, they had some really nice jewelry in the counter. And this is not the thrift store that I've showed you the counters before that are full. This was another one that we went to the day before because my daughter-in-law likes that one. And she was shopping for uh, vases. Oh, she gave me a beautiful crystal vase because I fell in love with it. It looked more like a perfume decanter. And I kept talking about it and talking about it. <laughs> and she says, you can have it if you want. It's gorgeous. So isn't that pretty? Can you guys tell what it is? Could it be? Could it be Jasper? It's got greenish and gold. See that? Oh my gosh. It is super, super cute. It's got a really big, almost like a J. Crew type of clasp on it. I didn't really check to see if it was sterling. I just fell in love with it. Tourmaline. I wish you were down the street. <laughs> got a necklace from an auction. You did. Oh my goodness, nice. Oh, then I got this one, Tiger Eye Chips as well, with the matching earrings for $4. They had it for eight. Again, these were half price. I like the way they used the spacing too, guys. Isn't that great? 
I think that's what I think, Jude. I think it might be Jasper. And I just love this one too. It's very delicate. Even though I don't like tiger eye that much, I think I've told you guys, it's not really one I'm really attracted to. But this one, for some reason, I did like it. And then they've got the little beads for the earrings. So not bad for four bucks on that one. And then that one. Oh, and then this is, this one still had a tag from, oh, 2028. This is the 1928 spinoff. They now do, and look, they even like scratched it off. I've never actually seen one brand new. So it used to, it's the same company as 1928, but now they're putting out 2028. And I know that some people have said the quality is not as great, but I fell in love with this style. Look at that little citrine colored stone and the chain is gorgeous and very heavy. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Yeah, this one's really pretty and it's long and it was only 350, it was half price. It's a long piece. I love the little bail they have on it or the, you know, it's kind of like a little fancy hook there. It doesn't hook on there though. It's got a regular thing. So that was nice. I love that one. Then I got this and this is Jade guys. This is what I keep saying too. You will, I think yesterday I misspoke and I said, you will find precious stones. Precious metals in costume jewelry. I think I said that during my auction. I meant to say you will find semi-precious stones very, very often in costume jewelry. This one was $350. And I looked at that through the light. This is Jay. I'm going to have to send it to Kelly. Maybe she can test it with her fancy machine. But I, I can swear it is. It's so nice. It's an oval. I don't believe it's sterling. I didn't even check, but I think it's just silver tone. Isn't that cute? And that one was half of six fifty. No, I think this was not the half. This was full price. So I went to two thrift stores in Chicago. So I paid six fifty for that one. I love it. That one's super cute. Then I got these beautiful scatter pins. They were five dollars, and they're little birds. Aren't they cute? I think these are darling. Got that. And then I got this beautiful um, shamrock with a wishbone and a pearl. I think that was about $4. The, pin, the brooches and their individual pieces had also gone up quite a bit. I left quite a few behind that were over $5. I just couldn't swing it. Yes, it feels extremely cold. It really does. And even when you're wearing it, doesn't pearls, when you take them off. Oh, we didn't talk about pearls, but we'll talk about it later. Of course, you know the test about the pearls, guys. You put them on your teeth and they feel gritty, but there's other ways. You can look at them, especially the freshwater pearls or the ones that aren't like Mikamoto or something. They're going to have inconsistency in their shape. They're not going to be perfectly round. This is a nice pair of, of faux ones, so they feel heavy and glassy and all of that. And of course, yes, they do feel gritty on your teeth, but there's other ways too. There's some really good videos on uh, here on YouTube. I'll try to link it in this channel. In this video, this guy from somewhere in Mexico, and they have one of the biggest pearl uh, uh, companies in the world. And he was talking about draping it through your hands. He had another test where you could just drape it around your hands. And I forgot all the intricacies of it, but I'll have to link it because it was very, very insightful. That's that. Okay, then I got this strand here. It also has a barrel clasp. So funny. They only wanted five for this. This is amethyst. It has kind of copper or brass colored spacers there. Really beautiful amethyst. And they only want it five for this one. It has a barrel clasp. Yet some of their pins, their brooches were outrageous. I went to one called Family Thrift. I think it's the chain. And then, oh, I can't, the other one's count, it's called discount something. It has the word discount in it. And I know it's a chain as well. Because when I did some videos from there a couple of years ago, several of my Chicago uh, viewers told me that they knew exactly which one it was. So they had a half price day for Mother's Day. Everything in the store, everything in the store was half off. I got clothes too <laughs> for myself. And uh, they were going to have another one on Memorial Day. I was, I was there. 
Oh, look at this one, guys. This one's so cute. What did I pay for him? $6. But he's gorgeous. And he's mother of pearl enamel. Look at that beautiful turtle. I couldn't leave it behind. I just thought it was so cute. I'm not a real turtle fan either, but I love mother of pearl. So I got that. Then, you know, I love my patriotic stuff. This one's called Yankee Doodle Kitty. And he was $4. But look how cute he is. I love it. I think it's made in the USA. No, made in China. But it's still cute. <laughs> 2005. I love him. Okay, this one's super cute. This has got an artisan signature on it. Hand-painted critters by Louis Miller Arts. Look at that lizard or gecko or whatever. Whatever the difference is, I don't know. Isn't he precious? I don't know what he put on him. It's got wire and maybe glitter paints. And he is just a darling. Look at the way he's standing. He was $4 too, but he is darling. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Here's another genuine Native American piece. with, And I just happen to know that this is real liquid silver. This is real turquoise, real he, she beads. It was only $5 because I lived this era when these were popular in the seventies. We all had these, we stacked them up. Everybody knew what a he, she bead was. This was the jewelry to wear, liquid silver, the barrel clasp, all telltale signs of vintage, genuine Native American pieces. Didn't need a signature to tell us that. And they were made kind of small. Were we really skinny back then or what? Because they always, they oh, and look at that barrel clasp. It's kind of unique, too. Kind of pointed. See, I mean, like, this is choker size. Cute, though. Okay. Then I found some jade, and I bought this because I know it's real jade. And I have a few pieces like it. It was $5. There is one missing, but I think I'm going to cut that piece off. I don't think it'll make any difference. And I want to study the jade. You can see the little black specks of it. You can see the coldness of it. Again, this is an example of them using just base metal, but using what we consider semi-precious stones, jade. But it was a, a common occurrence to find these in costume pieces in the 60s and 70s. And this is exactly what my coworker told me when he handed me and gave me his mother's old jewelry. He's like, it's really strange, but she just considered this her costume jewelry and it had garnets and it had jade and it even had some gold stuff in it. The, the little jade, um, I mean, the garnet bracelet had little gold beads and they tested positive for gold. This was $3, but I love it. It's a firefly. Now, what is it? Is it a firefly? What's it called, this one? And it, I, it's so cute, guys. It's like a gunmetal with purple rhinestones. I think it's a modern piece, but it's pretty. Dragonfly. Why do I call it a firefly all the time? Dragonfly. Yes. Isn't he pretty though? Super shiny. I love it. And then I got this one, another amethyst piece and $5 as well. Really pretty drop on that one. You can't see it. Let me turn it around. A little reflection on it. Then amethyst and some seed beads as well, and some pearls. And these are real pearls. And see how the little pearls, they kind of like, they're a little deformed. These are the freshwater pearls. So you can tell that those are, are genuine as well. Hey, Autumn Grace, how are you? Anna G, Tess, Kim, Julius, Dane is here, twice as nice. And Deals is here as well. Yeah, this one's really beautiful. I love that one too. Okay, then I got this elephant, and he was $3. He's really heavy. I thought he was a JJ, but I don't see a mark. Rhinestone eyes only. <laughs> He's cute. I got a sterling piece, and I paid up for it, but I thought it was so unique. I paid $14 for it. And it is leaves, but look at that filigree. And it has about three hallmarks on it. One being the word sterling. I haven't studied the rest of the hallmarks. 
I'll take a closer look at it, but it's amazing. And I think you could possibly wear it this way too with the leaves up. Isn't that cute? Look at that beautiful filigree work. Sterling silver. So I found that one. JJ, the the pins, oh, they're they're pretty common, but they're very unique. They're also cute. So it's a lot of people collect them. I found a sweater clip, but I think this one has a religious. Yeah, this one is darling. This is probably for a little girl because it's very small. So it's some sweater clips, and then they have the Blessed Mother right there in ivory. I mean in uh, enamel. Isn't that pretty? Definitely for a little girl, probably for her first communion or something, to wear a little sweater or something. I thought it was so precious. And this one was $4 as well. Just cute. And, of course, the Catholic medals usually have something in the back as well. Belle Mar, how are you? Hi, Leslie. Okay. Something fall off of there. Oh, this is sterling as well. And this is so funny. See how they, they drop things. Sometimes they drop the ball. This one was only $5, and it is sterling silver. A beautiful cross, a fleur de lis. I don't know what they call this particular cross, but it looks like fleur de lis there on the tips, and it's market site. And this one was only $5. So, yeah, sometimes some things fall through the cracks. Anyway, I still didn't buy any bags. I thought I couldn't really see anything right off the bat that I that I wanted from there in that, in those particular bags. And then I found this gorgeous Zuni inlay. This is, it fits me, and I've worn it all week, but I'll probably sell it. It is a little bit on the small side. See how this opening on my Yerman is not as wide? When I put this one on, it's just a little bit wider. And I have a fairly, <laughs> yes, I was thinking about you, of course. See, it's a little bit wider. So it doesn't fall off or anything, but it should really fit more like this. The opening should really be a little bit closer like my Yerman that I found in a jewelry jar, if you didn't know. <laughs> but I love it. It's really in wonderful condition. Of course, no signature on it or anything. But I can tell what I'm looking at because I've seen them many, many times. And um, I hope to find the other ring to show you next time. But basically, I've been looking through some of my books. And one of the things that's, that's pretty consistent and kind of, kind of a, I guess, an anecdote or something to keep in mind about Native American jewelry is the fact that this gentleman that wrote the book said, it's not that all Native American jewelry is so, is beautiful or wonderfully executed, and many of it is, but it's the fact that it's got history. It's got history, and this is a people that, that made this craft, and that's what makes it so collectible and so sought after, and still to this day, don't ever say it's trendy, because it is an absolute I icon it's something that we will always treasure because of its history and it doesn't matter if it's you know something oh it's so beautiful no it's the fact that it's genuine native american that makes it attractive to us you know that's what you have to bear in mind when you're looking at it too okay i found this brighton bag guys i was going to save it for them but it's full of jewelry too i believe um and i loved it because okay it's new tags and it's jewelry isn't that the cutest thing ever and this was half price as well. So I got it for $7.50. They had it for $15. It says Brighton there in the corner. That's so cute. I love it. It's a little uh, messenger bags from Brighton. And I have more jewelry in it. So that's why I showed it to you real quick. And then we'll finish up. Yes, go ahead. Please do that, Adam. Please do that. I'm going to go help Miss Zombie. In a little while, but I'll be popping into that auction, whichever auction you're talking about, and I will be there. All right. So please, thank you for asking as well, Adam. I appreciate your graciousness. This is, I think, a. It was only five. I think someone made it as a bracelet. It's amethyst, or maybe they were just buying the string of amethyst 
chunks there, but aren't they beautiful? Really, really pretty. I would love to see that on a choker. You know, just like a few. Wouldn't that, this is amethyst that I'm wearing right now too, guys. I found this in a jar. Wouldn't that be so pretty? Like a small strand with maybe sterling chain going around. And look at the different colors in that. Again, you just feel it. You can just tell that it is what it is. Twice is nice. How are you? I love that name. That is so cool. Hey, Nora A., how are you? <laughs> oh, and then look, this one is like my ring. But it's a little bit lighter. And this one was from the Half Price store. So th these were actually $4.50. This one was nine, so it's four fifty, and this one was two fifty. This is from that other store that everything was half off. So if you live in Chicago, go find that store because they're having another half price off on Memorial Day, and that one has the word outlet in it. So I don't remember the, all the names though. Anyway, this is some kind of lace agate as well, but it's I don't know if it would be the blue or the gray or purple, or what do you think? I will I will be selling the bag, Leanne. Are you in my auction? I will, if you go like my Facebook, I'll invite you to my auctions on Facebook and I'll probably bring it next week. Look at this, guys. I never leave Betty Boop behind. But in silver, I don't know if she's sterling. She kind of looks like sterling. But she, and then, well, maybe it's got a mark right there. See, I didn't have my loop with me. No, this is just a silver tone. But it is a C class and it's just so cute. This little Betty Boop there. And I think I got her for two dollars. Well, half of that, so I got it for a dollar. Isn't that cute? Yes, she's cute. I've never seen her in silver because she's so colorful, right? These were Mark 15, but I got them for $7.50. These are also sterling. They're heavy and beautiful, and they do appear to be either native inspired or Native American. I don't I have to study them a little bit more. They really look kind of Santa Fe to me. So cute. And they are genuine turquoise. Thank you, Belmar. I appreciate that. Aren't they pretty? And I, I did remember that other Brighton I found at the thrift store, guys. It was cute, too. But the line was so long that day, I, I decided to leave it. And that one was Christmas. And then I had another Brighton like this that had a puppy on it. It was so cute. But I love the jewelry. And look, it says love. Love jewelry, right? Okay, these are darling. These are pink mother of pearl, and they were marked 20. I got them for 10. Sterling silver. These are marked sterling. Look at that. They look white, but they're actually pink. That is pink mother of pearl. Aren't they cute? Let me see what they say on them. 925. And they say something else. I don't think it says Mexico. I'll have to look with my loop because I can't see the other marking, but these are darling. So I got those for half price too. I don't know why I got this. I just liked it. I got it for a dollar. It's just a cute little stripey ring. I just loved it. I love pink. It reminded me of Neapolitan ice cream, I think. I don't know, but I bought that. Then these are so pretty too. This is the lamp work, maybe because now I keep remembering what it's called, lamp work. And I love the orange. These were $2, they're marked four. I love this bracelet. These are some pretty, pretty beads. Look at that. Aren't those cute? Oh, I love it. And it's really nice and taut. I love orange. It's just so bright, it, it kind of makes you change moods. And then where was the other? Oh, another Native American piece. This one was marked 18 and I got it for nine. And this one just screamed with the patina and the tiny little, the tiny little turquoise and the little metal work on it. You know, you just, you see it, you know what you're looking at when you see it. I love the rich patina. Oh my goodness, who's coming in? Isn't that pretty? It's a little big on me. I might have to, I don't like to bend up st uh, sterling too much. Yeah, well, this was not a bag. This was actually individual pieces I picked up. And I think that's it. I love these beautiful pieces. I think that's it, guys. I'm going to let you go so we can get on with our Sunday. 
Uh, I've got quite a bit to do as well. And I will see you in the next video. I want to do a handbag haul. I'll show you that brighten a little closer and some other bags that I got recently. Thank you for spending a little time with me. I hope you learned something a little bit today also about reselling some of these wonderful finds that we encounter and there's no possible way you can keep them all. So we might as well make money, right? Oh, of course you can do that, Kim. Thank you so much for asking. Absolutely. Hi, Guillermo. I'll see you in a little bit, hopefully. Thanks again, guys, for everything. Have a wonderful week.